Most of us like to drink coffee. We do it every day, sometimes three or four times a day. But most of us are not aware that every time we make a cup of coffee made from one capsule, no sugar, no milk added, we use 14 liters of water. 14. That is 56 times more than the amount we drink at the end. Not so efficient. Most of the water is invested in growing the coffee beans, which usually happens far away from where we drink the coffee at the end. Another 20% is used for making the coffee at the machine and cleaning and washing it afterwards. Water drought is a global problem. In Italy, they now shut off water in Rome for up to eight hours a day in the summer. In California, they dry up gardens. In India, 50% of the land is already under extreme water stress. Spain is now importing water from France. In many regions, we basically cannot trust nature anymore. We don't expect the rain to come, and we start producing water using different technologies, desalination, for example. Water is used in everything we consume in life. Some of it is direct. We see it coming out of the tap. We pay the bill for it, usually. But most of it is the unseen water. It's the virtual water invested in producing and moving products and services around the world. So our consumption culture directly affects affect the water situation in many different countries. But let's go back to our coffee. Now I would like to make it a latte. Milk is very water intensive. We need to grow the cows, we need to grow the food for the cows, we need to produce the milk, and then we need to distribute it all around. So, for every 100 milliliters of milk I will add to my coffee, we will use up to 100 liters of water. If I'm vegan, a bit better, only 25 liters, but adding that to the 14 liters I mentioned before, and we already get to a big number. So, should we all keep having three lattes a day? What about food? We grow food with water, and then we eat it. Makes sense. Tomatoes, for example. The French people love tomatoes. Usually, they grow it locally in France, but off-season, when they can't grow it, they import it mainly from Morocco. Now, Growing tomatoes in Morocco is much more water-intensive than doing it locally in France. But the French people want their fresh tomatoes on the table all year round. So we will pay the price of 30 liters of water per one kilo of tomatoes. Meat is much worse. For every one kilo of beef meat on our table, we will use up to 15,000 liters of water. And if we like it to be a lamp steak, it's almost 60,000 liters of water per one kilo on our table. Alarming numbers. What about clothes? We need to wear something, not fancy. A pair of jeans, for example. A 501 Levi's jeans will consume up to 4,000 liters of water across its life. Now, the jeans, they don't like to drink water. But the cotton the jeans is made from loves water. So up to 70% of the water will go into growing the cotton and making it a fiber. Another about 25% will go into laundry. Now, we, the people, affect that stage by choosing the laundry machine, the cleaning materials, and most importantly, the frequency we choose to wash our clothes. So, 
should we all keep buying new clothes every few months? With all of those flying numbers, let's put it in perspective. The overall direct water consumption coming from the top ranges around the world between 20 liters per person per day in some of the countries in Africa, all the way up to, six, to 600 liters of water in the US. Two buckets, almost 60 buckets. Now, this is still the direct water. Once we try to estimate the real consumption, the one that includes the virtual water, we get to thousands of liters per person per day. Those numbers largely depend on where we live, what is our consumption culture, and where the things we consume are coming from. So, what is in this water that we all consume? Besides the H2O molecules and the chlorine taste. In Israel, for example, in every glass of water, glass of drinking water, we will invest five megajoules of energy. This is the amount of energy enough to charge an iPhone for more than a year. We also, along the process, produce 270 grams of solid waste. This amount equal to the weight of two new iPhone 7. So it's not just about the amount of water we consume. It's also about other uh, natural resources we consume when we produce and use the water. Those natural resources are coming with environmental price tag. Desalination requires energy. Pumping requires energy. Producing energy emits greenhouse gas emissions, which result in global uh, uh, warming. Everything is connected. In Israel, in our particular water system, 66% of the greenhouse gas emissions resulted from the water system are coming from the desalination stage. Another about 20% is coming from moving the water around the country. But water systems are different in different countries. It depends on the technologies, on the structure of the system, on the distances, the water quality. In uh, Israel, Denmark, or Italy, when we will use the same amount of water, it will result in different amount of greenhouse gas emissions resulted of the system. But at the same time, Israel, although I on its greenhouse gas emissions of the water system, also recycle more than 80% of the water, by large the leading country in that. So, there are different trade-offs to consider when we try to evaluate different water systems and their environmental impacts. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not against drinking coffee or buying new clothes every once in a while. We need to drink, we need to eat, we need to wear something. But the water crisis, water drought, is already globally affecting us. We are not even sure if we will have enough water to sustain humanity in the future. So this makes me wonder, can we do something better with our fresh water? Does it make sense to keep drinking so much coffee when we shut water in cities? Does it make sense to keep wearing clothes from materials that require so much water to grow? Is it even ethical to use so much water where ten tenth of the world does not have access to safe drinking water? I leave the stage today raising more questions than giving answers. But what I show today is actually true for many different natural resources, not just water. Virtual resources are used in 
everything we consume, from production to moving it, to consuming it, to dumping it. So next time, when we consume something, let's stop and think about it. Do we really need it? And if the answer is still yes, are we willing to pay the price for society? Thank you.